Okay, so gasoline prices, they're high. Obviously, everybody knows this. What are the reasons why? Well, check, high oil prices, right? That's the problem, we've been told that. We've been told it's the Putin price hike because the war with, with uh, Ukraine and Russia, they're driving oil prices up, supply chains, right? Uh, we've been told it's the greedy oil companies. Let's take a look at a couple of these with charts. You know, I always bring the receipts. I don't expect you to believe me. Don't trust, verify, I bring the receipts. So let's take a look at this. Here's the weekly uh, gas prices. And here we have it all the way back from 1994. Now gas had remained pretty much unchanged until 2004. We had almost a decade with almost no price increases with gas. You might ask yourself, why was there no price increases? And then from 2004 till 2008, they, they spiked pretty hard. As a matter of fact, 2008 was the last time we had kind of seen them this high, and they peaked at $4.11. That was the national average. The reason why I picked this price is that was the previous high in oil. But wait till you see oil. So let's take a look at this. So prices dropped after the great financial crash. They kind of came back up. They had a plateau right there. They've come down. They dipped in the March 2020 crash. Or I'm sorry, the March 2020 crash here. Um, so this was, they, they started coming down because of the increase in oil and natural gas the United States had, an overabundance of energy brought down. We had a decrease here in the March 2020 crash. Um, this red arrow that we have right here is when Biden happened to take office. All right, now it's not about the oil and him shutting down oil, although that's a part of it. We're going to get to that. Um, but this is where Biden took office right here, and this is what gas prices have done since. Now, they are $5.06 on the national average right now. Now, if we take a look at this, this is a zoomed in price of the um, of the gas, and let's not take a look at that one. Let's pull up this chart right here is the one I wanna show you. So they're telling us that uh, it's because Putin's fault. They tried to spin that inflation, inflation driving this is Putin price hike. All right, but that's the spin and it's, no one's buying it because we don't get our oil from Russia anyway. As a matter of fact, the United States is the largest producer of oil in the world. So why would that be affecting this? It wouldn't, of course, right? So let's take a look at this. So here we have a chart of oil, all right? Now, what we can see here is that in 2008, right here, oil spiked to $187 a barrel. Today, oil is very high at 108. But as you notice, we are well below where it had been all throughout this period and where it had been all throughout this period. So if we look at these together, what we can see here, let's see if I can uh, adjust this a little bit better. So what we can see here is that in this area, gas had been um, in this range under $4 a gallon, about um, three and change. And yet here we are, oil was way higher than it is today. So if oil was the cause of this, then why was oil so much more expensive yet gasoline was cheaper? The answer is, it's not about the oil, all right? So what is it really about? Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, a couple other things. Is it greedy oil companies? So this is what the Biden administration wants to tell us now, that they're being greedy, they're gouging us. And now they want to put all types of um, charges on them. They want to do a, a new tax. We want to tax the profits of these oil companies because they're greedy. They're charging too much. Okay, that's one theory. Is it because uh, President Biden wants to shut down the oil and gas industry, shut down all their drilling operations, taking away supply, um, taking away the investment that should be going into it? Well, that's part of it, um, but it's even more than that. So it's, it's, that, it's all of these things but it's something much more secret and much more scary I'm gonna show you. Now, I wanna do tell you that we were warned about this. As a matter of fact, we have a video right here that I'm gonna play you. Um, let's hear it directly from them. Let's play that video. They hate American energy and Joe Biden will shut it all down. He's going to. Uh, that if, if I became president. If Biden's elected, he will wipe out your energy industry. Another prediction. That is my favorite one, I must add, is that if I got elected... Gas prices going five, six, seven dollars for a gallon. <laughs> All right, so there you had it. We were warned that if Biden took office, we would see these gas prices. But why? Why are they so high 
Why are they higher than when oil was much higher? Okay, well, let's get to that here. All right, so <laughs> it's the government, stupid. <laughs> it's always the government. Now, we have inflation. Now, I think of it from the Austrian economics viewpoint that inflation is the increase in the money supply. Price is going up as the result of that. However, in today's context, CPI, consumer price inflation, they talk about consumer prices going up. So price inflation. So um, prices can go up for lots of reasons. They don't have to only go up because the money supply is increasing. Prices can go up also because of the government. The government's put regulations on. It's more expensive to operate in those um, environments where they have those regulations, and so that pushes the prices up. It's the government, stupid. Uh, you might have seen these pictures of the Biden administration or Kamala over here saying, I did that, I helped. Well, let's talk about this. So the hidden cost increases of government regulations is something called cost push. So they break inflation down into two, two categories. When they increase the money supply, there's more money chasing the limited supply of goods. So that's demand pull. There's so much extra demand from all the money that it pulls prices higher. That's one way. But government does something called cost push by adding all these burdensome regulations that businesses must comply under then these businesses are forced to raise their prices it pushes prices up and that's exactly what happened so when they pass regulations when they add taxes when they add fees that's what pushes the prices up in addition to many other things now it gets worse than this but let's break this down for a second so these are a few of the hidden things. This isn't the main thing. We're going to get to it and you're not going to believe this. Uh, but this is some of the things. So in January 2020, 2001, Biden's first action, very first day in office, the most important thing was to revoke the Keystone Pipeline, impose a moratorium on oil and gas leasing on federal lands. 25% of U.S. production comes from federal areas. So, hmm, well, you take 25% of the supply away and what is that going to do, right? Supply and demand. You know that we have the same demand. You take supply away, what's going to happen? So that happened day one and he didn't stop. Of course, he kept going. February 26, Biden updates the social cost of greenhouse gas emissions by altering the way the U.S. government calculates the real world costs of climate change. They do this to boost the figure it will use to assess greenhouse gas pollutions damage that inflicts on society to $51 per ton of carbon dioxide. So they want to put a tax on something hidden, on something that maybe the science is still out on, $51 per ton. It's seven times higher than they used, than they used to be when the former president was there seven times higher. Do you get that? This is something, it's not the oil. They impose it seven times higher. It says this would apply to any new oil and gas lease sale, raising producers costs to deliver new supplies. Cost push. Let's add seven, seven times more costs. What do you think happens to gasoline? But this isn't even, this isn't even the half of it. Just wait. All right, June 1st, 2021, eliminating a slew of tax benefits for oil, gas, and coal. So they had tax benefits. If they invest into things that help the economy, they got breaks. Well, let's just take all those away. So that increased their costs. Of course, they pass those costs on to you and I. It says eliminating these tax provisions imperils U.S. energy security by raising costs for domestic producers and would increase America's reliance on foreign energy supplies. Sort of like why Biden's going to Saudi Arabia and Venezuela and begging them to give us more oil when America's already the largest oil producer in the world. But of course, we eliminate these provisions and it imperils our energy security by what? Raising costs on you.